All right, Shorty, 2000s Japanese sports car icons. Can you name one? Uh, no. No. <laughs> it was a pretty dull time in the automotive industry from there, but the last couple of years, affordable sports cars are back on their menu. Love the Toyota 86, car of the year winner. And now for the same money, you've got a brand new MX-5. One purpose in mind for these cars, put a smile on your dial. Yeah, hey, well, they're both fun factor, that's for sure. But let's take the road element out of it. We're here at Eastern Creek. Let's just see how much fun they can be. Good playground, let's go for a run. Absolutely, let's do it. Rightio, Shorty. So, brand new MX-5 built from the ground up. One purpose in mind, to rekindle that lightweight sportster roadster that it started out in 1989. Yep, well it's definitely been a classic and it looks pretty snazzy, the new one, but uh, what's it like out here? Show you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can feel straight away, like it's pretty lightweight, it's yeah. really agile, it doesn't have a lot of grunt though. No, I noticed that, I was sort of looking across there and I can see your foot buried and I'm waiting for something, but it, uh, it never happened. No, but it's only a little 1.5 litre engine, so it's the same as the Mazda 2. Um, but wicked up a little bit, it's uh, longitudinally mounted, got a new, unique exhaust system on it, produces 96 kilowatts, not much, but this thing only weighs just over a tonne. Yeah, well that makes a big difference, doesn't it? That's certainly a weight accounts for so much, and agility on a place like this is um, is pretty pretty important, that really brings a fun factor into it, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely, but this thing is absolutely chuckable. Like the last one really was a bit understeery and a bit soft, but this thing still has that classic MX-5 character where it just rolls and it gently oversteers into the corner and, you know, I, don't, I reckon it's a heap of fun. And what's the steering wise? It's still got that typical MX-5 sharp kind of go-kart feel yeah, to it? Yeah, yeah, really. Like this, the electric steering on this thing is pretty razor sharp. I think it's just as good as the 86. Yeah, a little okay. bit less weight to it, but uh, it really turns in sharp and, you know, when you get into a corner like this one, you just feel it. It just rolls on that outside hunch gently sort of you know, pops the wheel out, but you really have to work it. Like this is a car that you, you drive at 10 tenths around here because you know, it doesn't have a lot of grunt and it revs to 7,200 revs. And you kind of really playful and chuck it around. I like it. That's fun fact, <laughs> not It's kind of progressive and really easy to find the limits of it. Yeah, well even from the passenger seat, I understand what you're saying, you can feel that roll and lean and that bite, so it, it's got a good feel to it. Yeah. Now, it is a roadster, so it's pretty cramped in here, it's a, and it's smaller than the original MX-5. Mate, I, I, 25 years later, it's actually smaller. I was going to say, I was going to ask you to move over, there's not a lot of room <laughs> in here, is there? And I'll tell you one thing uh, I'm not a fan of, is, is the tunnel down here. How much room does that take up? Have you got a big hump on your side? I've got a big hump down there, but luckily my left foot's using the clutch, so I'm not resting on it. But uh, it can be an inconvenience when you're out cruising just on the highway and having a relax with your left leg. But I'd have to say, you know, the real thing about this car, compared to the 86 in particular, it looks pretty good inside. It's actually a quality little little digger, you know. This yeah. uh, dual, dual tone look, it's got full sat nav, you know, leather seats with even speakers in the headrest for when the phone comes through. You know, it's pretty well loaded for 36 grand. Well, uh, it depends who buys it, I suppose. I can see that there'd be people that literally just buy it for its good looks and the fact that it's a convertible. But out here where we are today, it sort of comes into play. It is it is a ton of fun. Yeah, it is a ton of fun. I really like it. So, tell me about the 86. Let's go out for a drive in that thing and you show me what it can do. All right, let's have a look. Righto, hey mate. Toyota 86, it's familiar territory. Yeah. It's got a little bit more grunt than that Mazda, 147 kilowatts. Let's see what it's like. Can it do a bigger burnout? Oh, can it do a bigger burnout? Show me. <laughs> oh, not much. <laughs> Come on. Not a lot in it, you reckon? It's got 50% more power. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't you feel can, like it, does you it? Know, I reckon. Oh, I can feel a little bit more there. I must say, even with this car, I've always wished it had a little bit more power, oh. but. Um, it's such a great balanced thing, this car. I love it. In, the, in these circumstances, it's terrific. And the steering on this thing is absolutely fantastic. It does exactly what you want. You point and shoot, it goes there. You've got great progressive feel through it. You've driven it. Yeah, definitely. I love this car. This Every time I get in it, and particularly on a racetrack, you get out absolutely laughing with this thing. It's so much fun. But I reckon it's a little bit compromised. 
Yeah, maybe a little bit, but I mean, the, the handling, like, it feels sharper to me than, the, well, I was in the passenger seat, but it yep. feels sharper than the, the Mazda. There's definitely not as much roll through corners no, like yeah. that. It definitely sits flatter, but I don't reckon it's actually that much faster through the bends. Like, that Mazda MX-5 hangs on pretty well, even if it is rolling on its outside corners. It's got plenty of grip. And I think this thing does too, but I don't know if it's that much faster. Yeah, well, maybe it's the you know the roll and the squat and the lean down on the tyre gives it the grip. This has got a certain amount of grip, and then as you know, it just breaks away. There's no no in between mm. for it. It's got grip, 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 and then gone. Hang yeah. on. That's because it's got Prius tyres on it, mate. It doesn't even have sports car tyres. <laughs> well, that's true. Put some good tyres on it, it might make a hell of a difference to it, I reckon. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's a pretty raspy old engine, though, isn't it? It hasn't got the nicest note to it. Let's put it that no. way. No, and you do have to work it like the Mazda as well. Like, absolute Absolutely. limit. Like, there's no. It's not a torque monster in any in any case, but you you really got to be up it for the rent everywhere to get the most out of it. And as you can hear, it's yeah, it's. Yeah, it Not doesn't the nicest doesn't, note. doesn't really inspire all that, you know, sports carness that you want from a, and particularly a Subaru-based boxer engine, which used to sound great. Yeah, absolutely. Well, imagine it sounded like the WRX. That'd be oh, awesome, wouldn't it? That'd be unreal. The other thing, obviously, about this car is it's a four-seater, or they claim it to be. So it's a bit more practical for everyday use. But I'd have to say those things out the back are as useless as. Look, that they are fairly useless if you've got uh, real small kids. It's probably not even a win with that, to be honest, because by the time you put their seats in there, all that space is gone. But up the front, there's a definite difference. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely sitting a little bit further yeah, apart. Further away, I don't feel as cramped or anything like that. But I'll give it to you. I think the Mazda is much nicer inside than the dash and everything. Yeah, definitely. This thing does feel fairly cheap, like the plastics are hard. You know, there's a bit of fake carbon fibre and the switch gears, you know, pretty much a generation older. Yeah, the, the Mazda's definitely a class ahead, that's for sure. So I reckon that makes it a little bit more livable if you're gonna you know, drive it every day of the week. And it's a classy looking interior and a classy looking car from the outside. Yep. This thing it really is at its best on this sort of environment as a track, right? It, oh, absolutely, absolutely. But as far as looks go, I actually really like this thing still. I know it's a few years old, but I still think it's a great looking little car. Yeah, I mean, it is a great looking little car and I really admire Toyota particularly coming from where it's been in the last decade. They were as boring as Westinghouse as all of those cars, and this thing has really revitalised yeah. the company. And look, Mazda went through a period like that too. There was so many True. boring cars and stuff there, and that, that MX-5, that is a cracking looking little car. Yeah, I reckon we're winning on both counts. Japan has gone through a post-recession, bit of a boring phase, and they're really finding their feet now, and I reckon customers are winning either which way they choose. Oh, absolutely. I mean, both of them, you're looking at solid, reliable little cars, well-built cars. Um, hey, and I've had fun in both of you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, which one would you drive home in, though? I'm, I'm going to go with the 86. Okay. Me? I don't know. Depends how often you were going to come to a track like this. I would absolutely buy one of these things, modify it a little bit, put some great tyres on it, give it a bit more sparkle, a bit more character, and I would come here every second Sunday. But for every other day of the week, I'd probably take that Mazda home. Yeah, you'd yeah. take that Mazda. I'd, um, I, I, I think I'd go this, um, probably purely because of the room. You know, for my needs and what I want to do with it, it's a little bit more practical than the Mazda. But yeah, it's, it, once again, it depends on who's going to buy it. In the end, Sunday play toys or real livable little sports cars? I don't think they're livable little sports cars, to be honest. So, can we have a winner, or is everyone a winner? I think everyone's a winner, don't I, you? No doubt.